Hey, you made it live. This is our weekly Monday NCLEX questions. This is how to pass NCLEX plus Monday motivation. Our questions will be on palliative care and palliative care is super important. We are also going to be talking about nurses week that is coming up. We have some great things for you guys playing. So stick right here with us. Here is our nurses week schedule. Come on in. You got to share this video. You have to let everybody know. Good morning, Christina. It's good to see you um, that we have a ton of events coming up for Nurses Week, and it starts next Friday. So we have prizes we're gonna give away. We have a success summit. We're spotlighting our international nurses. We got another game night. It's gonna be crazy, and it is happening. So I want you to sign up for it so that you can get a ticket to all of these events. Go to remarnurse.com forward slash Nurses Week forward slash nurses week do that right now um and I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about it as we are going into it hey nelly it's good to see you selma you made it to the live class and this is what remar review is all about creating opportunities for you to be part of our family coming to our nurses events so that we can help you pass NCLEX past tease. Oh, it's going to be great okay here's our first question let's get into it let's get into it Question number one is this. The nurse is part of the healthcare team at an oncology center. A client has been diagnosed with leukemia with poor prognosis, but the client is not yet aware of the prognosis. How can the bad news best be conveyed to the client? Mm -hmm. So is it number one, the family should be given the prognosis first. Two, the prognosis should be delivered to the client at eye level. Three, the provider should deliver the news to the client alone. Four, the appointment should be scheduled at the end of the day. Come on in, everybody. This is question number one of our NCLEX questions today, how to pass NCLEX. So if you're just joining us, you have made it to the beginning of class. Congratulations. A lot of people are saying three, 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 three. Marie says three, Yvette says three. We're talking about how, we are talking about how bad news should be given to your patient. Yeah, how bad news should be given to your patient here. And so the options are number one, the family should be given the prognosis first. Two, the prognosis should be delivered to the client at eye level. Three, 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 the provider should deliver the news to the client alone. Or four, the appointment should be scheduled at the end of the day. Facebook, YouTube, it's divided right now. The correct answer actually is going to be number two. The prognosis should be delivered to the client at eye level. So um, two, communicating about a life-threatening diagnosis should be done in a team setting at eye level with the client for effective communication, okay? The, the family cannot be notified first because that would breach client confidentiality. The, yeah, yeah, if people are like, what? No, no, listen, um, the family may be present at the client's requ request, right? Not just, the, the second one here, a lot of people pick this one. Number three, it says the provider should deliver the news to the client alone. What if they have a wife? What if they have children? What if they have support systems? So number two is better, right? Because the client may wanna have family with them, right? The, the appointment should be scheduled when principals can all be in attendance and unrushed. So not the end of the day, not the end of the day. Um, and, and so this is important. Hey, another thing important. Hi, Tasha. Hi, Regina. She says, I just popped in to say I passed NCLEX RN two weeks ago. The virtual trainer is God sent. Congratulations, Tasha. I pause everything to acknowledge success here in our community. So um, thank you for coming on. Ah, ah, 
yes, yes, yes. So are you guys seeing it now? Um, it does make sense for the client to be um, given the information at eye level, but absolutely the support system should be there. The support system should be there. If I'm getting a serious news or if I'm dealing with some major life change, I, I will want my loved ones there with me. I will want them to be there to hear this information with me. Okay. So you got to be careful. You got to be careful. Everything that looks good is not always good on NCLEX. All right, let's do another question. Let me see if I can get you guys um, to pick the right answer this time. Hey, question number two, an elderly woman's current medication regimen includes naproxen. What outcome would indicate successful pharmacologic therapy? Hmm. Number one, resolution of infection. Two, tumor spread prevention. Three, joint pain relief. Or four, increased bone mass. All right, if you are a nursing student, if you are studying for NCLEX, if you are in nursing school, you have to know these type of questions. These questions are literally just like, take me right? Just, just here, this is an easy question for you. Pharmacology, so clutch in nursing school. Naproxen, very common medication, absolutely common medication. So what, what is successful based off of naproxen for this elderly woman? A lot of people are saying it. Yes, of course. Let's see those answers. And also smash that share button if you're on Facebook. We're studying. The correct answer is number three. You got it. Joint pain. I couldn't trick you guys on this one as much. Now you 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 knew naproxen. All right, let's move on to the next question. A client, I see people are putting three. Yes. A client is on a cast for six weeks for the treatment of radio and ulnar fractures, paler and paralysis of the client's arms and fingers were noted upon the nurse's most recent inspection. What is the nurse's most appropriate action? Number one, arrange for a stat assessment of the client's serum calcium levels. Two, perform active range of motion exercises. Three, assess the client's joint function symmetrically. Mm -hmm. Or four, inform the primary care provider immediately. Immediately. All right. Come on and put those answers on the screen. Hi, Colleen. Come on. We are on question number three. Irene, says number four. A lot of you guys are picking four. There are some people though that are picking three. And this is a tricky one. This is so tough. And honestly, this is why nursing students struggle sometimes with getting it down to two and then not knowing which one to pick. Yeah, you can get it down to two, but then you're not really sure which one to pick. Here, most people I see are getting it down to three. Are we going to assess the client's joint function symmetrically or four, inform the primary care provider immediately? Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. The correct answer is going to be absolutely number, number four. Yeah. And the reason why is because the reason why Shova says it is because this sounds like to me compartment syndrome, right? Already because the patient has the patient has paler and paralysis. And so when you talk about compartment syndrome, you are going if you have the virtual trainer, you can see my beautiful notes on orthopedics. We actually go over compartment syndrome. So I say um, compartment syndrome is a medical emergency. Like it is a medical emergency when this happens. And there are six P's. There are six P's of compartment syndrome. I'm going to give you two of them. We're here with paler and paralysis, but also 
If your patient is complaining of pain, and this is when they have a cast on, you're only going to see compartment syndrome, uh, well, mostly if a patient is wearing a cast. So pain, paresthesia, right? So if there's numbness, paler, if you notice a color change, paralysis, patient is having difficulty moving their fingers, right? Um, pulselessness and poikilothermia. These are all the six Ps of compartment syndrome. And again, if you have the VT, this is page 55 where we go over orthopedics, okay? So very, very important. Always keep my VT notebook handy because I always like to give you guys references. Somebody says it's page 49. Oh yeah, so in, in 55 for the RN, this is a registered nurse, and then the PN is page 49, all right? Gotta get that right. And let me go back to the question because a lot of people pick number three, which is assessment. And normally, normally when we are talking about uh, getting more information, we definitely want to assess the patient. But here we have enough to call the doctor. We already have paler and paralysis. So do I need to assess joint function? Because that's what the assessment is about. Sometimes we just see the word assess and we just go after it. Like, okay, that's the right one because if we're thinking of the nursing process, if you're thinking of the nursing process, the first step in the nursing process is to assess. So it's like, oh yeah, this is automatically what I'm supposed to do. But look here, what are we assessing? Remember, reading is very fundamental. So we are um, assessing joint function. No, no, joint function is not going to, it's not gonna work here. Right. That's not the priority. So we have to call the doctor. OK, yes. So I like that, Nancy, this here, because this is a medical emergency, the nursing process, it doesn't apply to this question. Right. It doesn't apply to this question. So critical thinking, critical thinking, especially if you are taking the next generation NCLEX, especially if you're going to be taking the next gen NCLEX, the critical thinking is going to be uh, be. Well, it's always going to be content, but with that critical thinking aspect of it, you can do very well on the question presentations for Next Generation NCLEX. So stick here with me because we will be talking so much about that. Oh, we'll be talking so much about that in the future. Okay, here we go. Question number four. Let's try another one. It's this. The home health nurse visits a male client to provide wound care and finds the client lethargic and confused. His wife states he fell down the stairs two hours ago. Okay. The nurse should, number one, place a call to the client's healthcare provider for instructions. Two, send him to the emergency room for evaluation. Three, reassure the client's wife that the symptoms are transient. Or four, instruct the client's wife to call the doctor if his symptoms become worse. Okay. All right. So what say if you read my nurses? We're talking about a situation where the home health nurse has to make a decision. And remember, when you're talking home health nurse, home health nurse, we are talking about somebody that's not in the hospital setting, right? May not have all the tools that you would normally have if you worked in inpatient services. So what is the best thing the, the, the nurse in a home health setting should do when she finds this client? The client is just supposed to get wound care. She's just there for wound care, but new things have transpired. Does she need to call the doctor? Does she need to just send it? Does she tell the, the wife to just remain calm and, and just monitor the patient, right? So with this situation, the best thing that the nurse should do is going to be this, which is send him to the emergency room for evaluation. Yes. All right, so there's a lot going on here. There's a lot going on here. This client requires immediate evaluation. A delay in treatment 
could result in further deterioration and harm, okay? Um, home care nurses must prioritize interventions based on assessment findings that are in the client's best interest, okay? And I know if I go back to the choices here, some of you guys picked, number one, place a call to the client's healthcare provider for instructions. No, 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 no. As a nurse, you have an, uh, as a nurse, you have the autonomy, you have the ability to escalate uh, a client's um, assessment. You have a, a, the ability to escalate the, the client's access to care, especially in a home health environment. Imagine you have a patient that is, what is it? Lethargic and confused. They're falling, right? And you say to the board of nursing that instead of sending my patient to the emergency room, I'm going to call the doctor. I'm going to tell the doctor I have a patient here at home. Well, first of all, I'm going to call the doctor and then I'm going to wait for the doctor to get back to me. How long can that be? You're, you're, you're at home. You guys think about it. You're at home and you have to call a doctor who may be in, in a patient's room in surgery, maybe, um, you know, uh, around the hospital has to be found, has to return your pager back to them. So you're calling and we're sitting at home with the patient, right? And the patient's confused, lethargic, said the patient fell and we're waiting for a doctor to call us back. And let's just say the doctor calls us back in an hour, okay? And we tell the doctor that our patient is doing the same thing. Our patient is patienting, right? They're doing the same thing. They fail. They're confused. They're lethargic. We wait an hour to tell the doctor those same things that we already know. What's the doctor going to tell us to do? What's the doctor going to tell the nurse to do? The doctor is going to tell the nurse to send that patient to where? The ER, send that patient for evaluation. So you could have done all of that on your own or you could wait two hours for somebody else to tell you to do it. And that's the difference, honestly, between some patients living and dying. It is their ability to get care faster, right? And, and, and so we wanna be cautious when we take NCLEX and we wanna feel like we're doing the right thing and staying within our chain of command, but for real, guys, it is the nurses who save patients' life more regularly than the doctors. And I have confidence to say that because it is the nurses who are spending more time with the doctor, uh, with the patients than anybody else, right? So it is the nurses who notice little changes in their patient. Oh, man, here go the choices, guys. I don't know if I read the rationale, but yeah, uh, this is it. Number two is going to be the most appropriate. It is going to be the most appropriate for that home care nurse to do. Send that patient on to the ER. And I just got to say this because this is my hobby horse. And I know that you guys, one day you will be entrusted with a nursing license. You know, my mom got COVID back in October of last year. And we, she was feeling bad, right? She was feeling bad and we, we, we went like three days later to get a COVID test. Her COVID test came back positive. And so she went home that night and I noticed that she started developing a cough, right? And she was coughing up pink sputum, like, like literally frothy pink sputum. And um, I said to her, mom, this is not good. Like you got to go to the, you got to go to the doctors. This is this, you got to go to the emergency room right now. And my mom was like, no, I don't feel like it. I'm tired. I'm weak. You know, when you have COVID for anybody that's ever had COVID, when you get COVID, you have zero, you have zero energy. You don't want to do anything. So my mom is laying on the bed and she's got little tissues all over a frothy pink sputum everywhere. Right. And I'm like, you got to go now. It was like four o'clock in the morning. So we took her to the urgent care. Of course we get there. They had to put oxygen on my mom. Um, they, they said she had pneumonia. She had developed a blood clot all because of COVID. Right. And I said to myself, if I had not been a nurse, if I had not intervened at that time, you know, if God had not put me in a position to help my mom, it's very likely my mom would not have survived, right? I know many people who lost their parents to COVID, not because, 
um, not not because it was their parents, you know, um, pre-existing conditions. It it literally was because their parents did not get the treatment they needed in an early stage of COVID, right? COVID progresses so fast that sometimes even if you get treatment aggressively after a certain time, it's very difficult to recover. And so you guys have to understand that your ability to speak up, your ability to apply your knowledge to somebody's life can be the difference between them seeing another day and not. So that confidence that sometimes we lack as new nurses, you guys have to find it immediately. You have to find it immediately because um, people are going to live or die based off of what you have the capacity to do for them. And that's the responsibility of a nurse. And it happens whether you work in a hospital or whether you, you know, work at home or whether you're working at all. Right. Because I'm in education. But I'm telling you, people call me. People talk to me all the time about their health. And so, guys. We just have to be able to apply what we know um, to help our community. Oh my goodness! Okay, that's my hobby for that's my hobby horse for today. <laughs> All right, here we go. Um, question number five is this, guys: A nurse is providing palliative care to a client diagnosed with chronic liver failure. What is the primary goal of the nurse's care? Okay. A nurse is providing palliative care to a client diagnosed with chronic liver failure. What is the primary goal of the nurse's care? Hmm. Number one, to improve the client's and the family's quality of life. Two, to support aggressive treatment for cure. Three, to provide physical support for the client. Four, to help the client develop his own plans with each discipline of the healthcare team. Okay. This is good. This is good. Mm -hmm. We're talking about palliative care here, guys. We're talking about palliative care. What is the correct answer? Go ahead and put the comment on the screen. Just tap in, share your answer. When you're talking about palliative care, there is a certain shift, right? There is a certain shift in what the function of the nurse's role is, okay? <laughs> Somebody said, this is a tough one. It is a tough one. It is a tough one. Commit to it. You guys can do it. And at the end of the day, we're all here to learn. If we got everything right all the time, well, I don't know. We wouldn't be appropriate for, uh, for life, right? We'd be made for heaven. Here we go. The correct answer is going to be number number one. It's number one to improve the client and the family's quality of life. Yes, 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 yes. We are talking about, we are absolutely talking about palliative care. And that's going to be to relieve the suffering and provide the best possible quality of life while there is still time for the clients and their families. So shout out to all the nurses who will be working in palliative care. Um, you guys are amazing, um, amazing and so loving. So, so loving. All right. Okay. Um, our Monday motivation that we're going to talk about, and this is a uh, super important that turns dreams into reality, turns dreams into realities. But but first, before we do that, I want to go over the nurse's week schedule. And this is a, literally a, a, a spotlight for every nurse, no matter, no matter where that patient, I mean, where that nurse is. Okay, so check out the events here and think about the ones you want to attend, because these are going to be live events. So if you have not signed up for Nurses Week, if you have not signed up for Nurses Week, you need to register for it and you register by going to, and again, this is a free event. So once you sign up for it one time, you're going to get access to all of these things. So you go to remarnurse.com forward slash Nurses Week, and we're going to put the link in this video. But when you do that, you will get the workbooks, you will get the times, you will get everything 
for every day of Nurses Week. And so it's going to start um, May 6th. And on May 6th, we're going to do a kickoff event and we will be doing a quick facts review. So all of my nurses who are um, who are studying for NCLEX, quick facts review, we're going to start by going over this event, uh, going over this book during the event. And we'll be doing prizes and giveaways um, all week long. So we're going to do the quick facts review, okay? Um, Saturday, tell your friends, I will be doing a tease review. How many people have been asking me for teas? So I, um, I will be focusing on that review. And this is also an opportunity for you guys who are in nursing school or you know one of your friends, have, they have not gotten into nursing school yet, but they're trying to, they need to pass the teas. We will be spotlighting the quick facts for teas book. And I will also be doing the four part teas review. So I'm gonna go over English, reading, math and science, okay? So y'all pray for me, pray for me because the T's, in my opinion, the math is harder, it's harder to me than NCLEX. Uh, okay, but anyways, this is, a, this, is, this is what Nurses Week is all about. We will be <laughs> supporting every nurse. Um, Sunday, Mother's Day on Instagram, I'll be going live at 8 p.m. with my mom and we will be giving away prizes for expecting mothers, mothers as well. So shout out to Instagram for hosting me on Mother's Day. And then um, Monday, we're going to have our Monday Motivation Nurses Week edition, which is what we do every Monday. We'll be doing that at 8 p.m. Look at the themes here, 8 p.m. Uh, Tuesday, yo, Tuesday, we are having another NCLEX game night. And so that is at 8 p.m. We will pick three winners and we will be giving out cash prizes for the game night on Tuesday. Have you signed up for this? I'm giving you reasons to sign up for Nurses Week here at Remar. Wednesday, we'll have our Winning Wednesday presentation where I will be going over some great content. And especially, listen, if you guys are studying or you guys are um, taking NCLEX in May, this is an event every day you'll want to go to. So at 12 p.m., I will be doing a Winning Wednesday over content. And then at Wednesday night, guys, I will be doing my Nurses Success Summit. And Grand Canyon is sponsoring this event. So they will be signing up uh, nurses who want to go back to school, right? So if you're an RN and you want to get your BSN, then they will be there so they can sign you up. They have a Remar Nurse Scholarship that they will be giving, which is an amazing discount. And remember, with Grand Canyon University, their courses are online. So you don't have to sit in the classroom. You literally can go online for your education, okay? Um, so I will also be going over my first shift book, okay? And this is where I will be talking about how to be a successful nurse. So if you don't have first shift, we will be diving into it for the Nurses Success Summit. I'm, I'm almost positive I will be talking about um, how to transition into nursing, things you need to look for when accepting a job, how to handle your patient assignment, the pitfalls to avoid. You know, I've been a nurse now for over 12 years. I, I would like to say I have a pretty awesome um, position. I love my nursing career. I love what I do. And so I will be sharing all of my tips and tricks with you for the Nursing Success Summit. Ah, it's happening on that Wednesday, May 11th. And then to culminate the entire nurses week, we will be doing an international woo -woo, nurses day. So all of my nurses from um, every country, okay, every country, all over. And you guys just represent your countries right now. Let me see. Do I have any international nurses on today? Typically, I'll have nurses from Nigeria, uh, Ghana. I'm shouting out Jamaica. I'm shouting out. I'm, I'm grafting in Puerto Rico, <laughs> even though it's part of the U.S. Um, love my nurses from Puerto Rico. Love my nurses from uh, where, where do we have? Uh, all over. Nigeria, Jamaica. I knew it. Yeah. And so I will be doing a special event for international nurses and it will be an NCLEX review. So it, it, listen, even if you're not an international nurse, you need to come to this NCLEX review. All right, Liberia, yes. Is that Russia? Cameroon, oh, I, I should have had my flag. Can't forget the Philippines as well. 
So yes, all of you guys, all of you guys, we will be doing an International Nurses Day and Guyana is in the house. Kenya, oh, I knew I I started something. Haiti, oh, okay. So Thursday will be you guys' day, okay? Thursday will be you guys' day and we will be doing a free NCLEX review for our international nurses. I'm super excited about it. I'm so excited about it. And look, I'm just the UK... Nigeria all the way. I could be here all day. Jamaica in the house. Shout out Kingston, Devin's house. Love that place. That's the best ice cream on the planet in, in Jamaica for sure. Um, Cameroon. Okay, okay, okay. Cameroon, Philippines. Yes, 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 yes. All the hometown heroes. US, I have not forgotten about you, but this will be International Nurses Day. So again, sign up for it. Sign up for it, guys. Right now, um, remarnurse.com forward slash nurses week. All right. Joseph is representing Sierra Leone. Amazing, amazing, amazing. Zambia, New Jersey. I see you, Nikki. Nikki's like, I'm holding it down. I'm holding the U.S. down in this place. <laughs> okay. All right. So here is our uh, here is our Monday motivation. Turning dreams into reality. Okay. Turning dreams into reality. Let me ask you this. I mean, keep it real. I want, I want to see what you guys put. If you were granted three wishes, what would they be? Just tell me one wish. If somebody, if somebody gave you three wishes, what would one wish be? Oh, I want to see what, who, who do I have rocking with me on this live today? What kind of people, what kind of wishers do I have rocking with me? If somebody granted you three wishes, right? Just hypothetical. What would be, what would be one wish? Pass NCLEX. I love that. Pass NCLEX. Don't even have to take the NCLEX. Let me see if I can, <laughs> let me see if I can put this up here. Oh man, where'd it go? Oh, let me get it. Let me get it. Let me get it. Don't even have to take it. I love that. Yeah. Pass my NCLEX. Good health. I like that. Yes. Good health. What else? What else? What else? Most of you guys are on the passing NCLEX boat. Yes. Get your ATT and pass NCLEX. That's right. Going to heaven, passing NCLEX, living in peace. I love that too. House all the homeless women and children. These are amazing. These are amazing. Own a house, be financially stable. Yes. Definitely passing NCLEX will help you to do that. I love it. I love the com community that we have here. Yeah, have a little wealth. You could do that. We're all, we, we all seem to be on one mind. There's some things that you can't buy, right? So health, invention of cures for diseases to get your nursing license. Oh, just lost your mama. We want her back. Yeah, yeah. Mother's Day is coming up. Have you thought about a way that you're going to remember your mom for Mother's Day? Something you'll, you'll something special you might do. What is something special that she can do to remember her mom this Mother's Day? Well, I can't imagine how tough that is. Being financially stable, pass the NCLEX, be sickness free. Okay. Sound mind. Okay, you guys are, thank you so much for indulging me. I really, I really want to know what you guys are thinking. What, what is the need? What do you, what do you need to get a VT for free to pass NCLEX? Good health. Yeah, I like that. I like that. Send me an email. Sometimes we have not because we ask not. Uh, work all day will be my second Mother's Day without her, without your mom. Man, I can't imagine how tough that'll be. So you're just going to work all day. Alive and well to take care of my son. We love our sons, don't we? Our sons have our hearts. Okay, so I asked the question. I did ask a question. Yes, good health. Good health, yeah. I asked this question if... If you were granted three wishes, what would they be? What would they be? Um, and so, you know, these are the common things. Before I even asked you guys, these are some of the things that Team Remar came up with. 
right? Wealth, promotion in your job. Nobody said this fame, but I don't know, maybe there's some singers or actors out there that would like that. A long life and passing NCLEX, right? And so I asked the question as a hypothetical, like it could never happen, but you guys know where we get our strength from, where we get our wisdom from around these parts, right? And so I got to take you to the Bible because this is a situation that actually happened, right? And if you don't know this story, this is King Solomon's dream. And it says, at Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon during the night in a dream. And God said, ask for whatever you want me to give you. Solomon answered, my father David, your servant, was honest and did what you commanded. You made me king in his place. But I am only a child and not and do not know how to carry out my duties. Your servant is here among the people you have chosen, a great people, too numerous to count or number. So give your servant a discerning heart to govern your people and to distinguish between right and wrong. For who is Abram? to govern this great people of yours. The Lord was pleased that Solomon had asked for this. So God said to him, since you have asked for this and not for long life or wealth for yourself, nor have you asked for the death of your enemies, but for discernment and administering justice, I will do what you have asked. I will give you a wise and discerning heart so that there will never have been anyone like you, nor will there ever be. Moreover, I will give you what you have not asked for, both wealth and honor, so that in your lifetime, you will have no equal among kings. And if you walk in obedience to me, and keep my decrees and commands as David, your father did, I will give you a long life. I love that story. You can find it in 1 Kings 3, 4 through 15. If you have never heard it before and you want to research some more on it, the lessons for us for this week is this. If we truly wish for something that is in line with God's will, he will definitely grant us the desires of our heart. Now we cannot be asking for stuff that we know God is not, God does not change, right? And so his perfect wisdom, his perfect knowledge um, is just. But when we have desires of our heart that also align up with his will, then I think he gives us those things freely. There are so many things in my life that I have prayed for that literally God has, um, he's delivered. And, and not delivered in, in my time, not delivered right away, but delivered in his perfect time. And so those of us who are praying for peace, those of us who are, you know, mourning loved ones, you know, we, we do have Mother's Day coming up. This might be hard. Like this day might be so, this Mother's Day might be so hard for somebody. Um, but if you ask God to give you peace, help you get through it, um, help you, uh, focus on the blessings of today, the promises of his soon coming. I believe that God will grant you that peace. Um, but we we do, we have to get into a, a matter of praying for things specifically and asking God to take care of those things. Listen, I remember when I was single, y'all don't know this about me, but I wasn't gay before Mark. Like you guys see Mark and Mark is my husband, right? Before Mark, there was somebody else. Like there was somebody else that I was engaged to, that I was going to marry. Girl, I had a ring and everything. I had, the man gave me a ring, right? And I was planning this wedding with this guy who was not Mark. And I knew it wasn't right. I knew it wasn't right. I knew God was not happy. Um, and so long story short, I broke off the engagement, didn't go forward with this, but I was so like, you know what, God, you said, I, you said not him. So I'm gonna tell you what I want. I want tall. I want brown skin. I want him to love you more than anybody else. Like I literally made a list and was like, here, God, this is what I want. You figure it out. I want him to wear glasses. 
I like I wanted them to be a like a preacher, like all these things. And you guys know what? Bam, Mark Callion. Years later, years later, Mark Callion. Anyways, God, if we truly wish for something, oh yeah, oh my goodness. Listen, this is a whole nother sermon. Oh my goodness. <laughs> all right. So um, cause you 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 can't, you didn't, you didn't miss out on all of this. You didn't miss out on all of this. God is good. God is good. So anyways, Mark, if you truly wish for something that is in line with God's will, he definitely will grant it for you. And number two, this lesson for us is that God will never give us more than we can handle. Man, that's a message right there. God never puts more on us than we can bear. Number three, God will give us more than what we ask for. So if we have just a mustard seed of faith, if we just have a mustard seed of faith, he can give us more. And then uh, four, God knows our situation. He knows exactly where you is, where you are. <laughs> he, he, he has not gotten off the throne. He has not lost sight of you. I love how the Bible says that um, the number of hair, hairs uh, on your head, he knows. He knows he's your creator. He knows everything about you. He looks on, he looks upon us with uh, grace and mercy. He looks upon us with, and you know, some people think this, have this idea that God is angry at them and God is like up there watching them. Like, I, I knew you, I knew you was going to mess up Regina. I knew that you were going, I knew you, I knew you were who you said you weren't like, right. We have that view of God that he's always trying to catch us doing something, but that's not true. God already knows our shortcomings. That's why when we do mess up, he says, my son got that. My son already covered that. Like Jesus, Jesus paid it all for you. I don't, he, his promise is that he would not remember your sins, right? As far as from the East is to the West, isn't God good? Isn't God good? Right. He looks upon us with compassion for the mothers who have children. You guys know our kids, sometimes they just, you be thinking, why would you even do that? My son is five years old. And I, I imagine God looks at me the way I look at my son, Michael, when he does something, I'm not like, oh, I'm going to get you for doing that. I'm like, son, you got to do better next time. I still love you. There's nothing I wouldn't do for you. There's nothing. My son could ask me for anything. I love my son. And that's how God loves us. He, he doesn't want us to be a servant. He wants us to be a son or a daughter to him. And so when we ask him for things, just look at him as a parent who loves you so much more than anybody else in this world. And so our lessons for today is ask, all right, ask God freely for a discerning spirit. He's good all the time. Okay. Our scripture, James 1, 5, if any of you lacks wisdom, hey, Solomon was the first to say, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> you should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault and it will be given to you. I love that. I love that. I love that so much. <laughs> oh man, you guys know, I tell you that all the time. When you come here, when you come here, it is a must that if you don't know something, you just say, I don't know. It's no sense of pretending. You don't have to pretend for us. We're community. We're going to keep it real. We're going to show We're going to talk about things that, you know, we struggle with. We're going to talk about our goods. We're going to talk about our bads. But um, just say you don't know something. If you don't know it, then you can seek wisdom to find it. All right, guys, I'm going to get out of here. Before I go, though, I got to tell you about my virtual trainer. The NCLEX virtual trainer is the best training system for nursing students who need to pass the exam. My name is Regina Callion, MSN RN, and I have helped thousands of nursing students pass the NCLEX exam with my program. You're gonna love it. With my NCLEX review, I'm going to give you all of my nursing content in one place. Not only that, I'm gonna make sure that after every individual lesson, you know what is most important. And if you need questions to help you, I have the questions right here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give you an amazing opportunity to get in the virtual trainer. I'm also gonna send you the virtual trainer student workbook, as well as my quick facts for NCLEX. This is it. This is the opportunity that you've been waiting for. Click the link below. This is the number one training system for nursing students who need to pass NCLEX. Don't miss out on this opportunity. Click the link below. Hey, what are you waiting for? 
I want to see you on the inside. This is the opportunity. You don't want to miss it. If your nursing license is important to you, you will take action right now. Let's click the link. Let's go. The virtual trainer is my favorite one. But before I let you guys go, hey, guess what? The Nurses Week event is coming. It is coming. Please sign up for it right now. Bam, bam, bam. By going to remarnurse.com forward slash Nurses Week. And we literally starting next Friday. If you start here, Friday, May 6th, we're going to go with the kickoff event. Quick facts review, 12 p.m. Mm. That's going to be fun. Saturday is the tea. Saturday night is the teas review. So we have to prepare for that um, for you guys. You want to make sure you download the workbooks. We will be going for teas, reading, English, math, science. Mother's Day, we have the Instagram live. So follow me on Instagram. We'll be doing giveaways and prizes then. And Monday, Monday motivation will be at 8 p.m. Tuesday is the game night. Uh, I make, I love it. Make says, I already signed up. I'm in there. I'm in there. <laughs> Tuesday is the game night. This is for nurses at every level, no matter what. Nurses at every level. All right, Tasha, we love you. We are praying for you. I'm going to have Mark um, say a special prayer for you um, so that you can get through this difficult time um, because you are very important to us. You, Tasha, are very important to me. Okay. And I want you to know that um, you are stronger. You, you are going to get through this difficult time and you're going to have a testimony because there's somebody that's going to look to you for encouragement and they're going to ask you, they're going to say, how did you do it? And it'll be your opportunity to give um, God glory. It'll be your opportunity to give God glory. Yep. <laughs> okay. All right. So um, we are going to do the game night on Tuesday. And we are also going to do Winning Wednesday and then the Nurse Success Summit. The Nurse Success Summit with uh, Grand Canyon University signing you up. If you want to go back to school, right? If you are thinking of going back to school, come to that event and um, be prepared to reach out to our counselors from Grand Canyon University. Uh, Lauren, she will be there to help you get started for school, tell you how much it costs, all that good stuff, right? Um, all, but more importantly, tell you how much you can save. And then International Nurses Day, whoop, whoop, wondering who I will be representing and shouting out. Okay, guys, that's it. That's it. It was a great, it was a great episode. We had so much fun. I love when we come together. We got Nurses Week coming up, so make sure that you stay right here. Like our Facebook page and subscribe to our YouTube channel. I almost have 100,000, oh my goodness, I almost have 100,000 YouTube subscribers, which just blows my mind. Where are you guys at? Representing all over the globe for VMAR Review. Don't forget, guys, you can, you will, and you must pass NCLEX. Later!